Hi folks, I'm starting this tutorial where the last one finished off, playing back an animation built using live face mocap combined with lip sync produced automatically using Reillusion's new Aculate solution, an incredibly fast and simple production workflow. This video will cover the updates to manual facial animation tools here in iClone 7.9 using avatars updated with the new scan derived expressions over in Character Creator 3.4. So I'll start with this existing animation and show you how the latest version of Face Puppet can be used to easily modify it. Opening Face Puppet here, experienced iClone users will notice a few small changes to the interface, which will make an enormous difference to productivity. And without a doubt, the most powerful new Face Puppet function is, in just the same way as the latest live face mocap recording, being able to not only blend animation as you did before, but being able to replace animation on selected parts of the face. Now, existing avatars, those which haven't been updated with the latest X Plus animation profile, will still work fine with the latest face puppet. So you can use solo feature selection just as you did before, and you can create new animations from combinations of feature controls, as well as add animation to particular features using blend mode. So here, using Blend, I'm adding some simple browse up and down animation to the current clip. You'll notice the new crosshair guide which appears when you preview or record face puppet animation. This really helps to gauge exactly where the mouse is in relation to the zero starting point. Next, and with the same browse selections and controls, I'll record animation using the new replace mode. So, blending animation means adding motion to an existing clip, whereas replace means you can completely overwrite animation. And of course, you can also delete animation by simply not moving the mouse during recording. Now, for compatibility, solo feature selection still drives default avatar expressions. And whilst you can use this to produce animations on updated avatars, to get the benefit of the new Arkit and Tongue expressions in Face Puppet, You'll find these in a new set of full face animation profiles over on the left of the interface. Here you'll find a lot of new facial expressions, both full face and part face, which can be used for single pass as well as multi pass animation and can also be combined with default expressions using solo feature selections. Arkit closed and open sets are full face expressions covering basic emotions such as happy and sad, where both sets keep the lips closed during mouse up. They can all be used during lip sync. On mouse down, the difference between open and closed is simply that closed expressions keep the jaw closed whilst opening the lips, whereas open expressions also open the jaw. Except open and closed, the rest of the new Arkit profiles provide controls for parts of the face. This is like solo feature selection, only without having to select individual features and controls on the solo feature selection interface. So here I've selected the Arkit basic browse up and down expression and I'll use this to replace the browse animation on the current clip. And just as with the latest live face mocap, being able to replace animation on parts of the face is the equivalent of going from single track to multi-track recording. It opens up new workflow possibilities where you're no longer limited to repeated recording passes which can only create new or add to existing animations. Next, I'm previewing the new Arkit I look expression. You can see how realistic this is. And I'll use this expression to replace the eye animation on the current clip. And as I continue, it's worth considering what is the difference between facial mocap, which is how this clip was originally created, and face puppet. With the latest functionality, mocap and puppetry are actually interchangeable. You can modify mocap using face puppet, and you can modify face puppet animations using mocap. Really, the only difference is the controller, where facial mocap is obviously controlled by the user's face, and puppetry, which is really mouse motion capture, is controlled by hand. So next, I'm replacing the original mouse mocap using face puppet. This won't replace the lip sync, of course, since that's from Aculips and is handled separately on the Visium track. But as I hope you can see, changing a character's emotional expression, even during lip sync like this, is really simple using the latest face puppet. Now, there are many different ways to control the facial parts using the latest Arkit expressions, and it's really worth exploring these and previewing before you record so that you're comfortable with how a particular control works before you commit to recording. 
But of course, with replace functionality, you can simply overwrite any recording on any part and at any stage of the production process. So if you're not happy with a particular part of an animation, or if you feel that you didn't record exactly what you wanted in a face puppet pass, you can simply change it and overwrite using replace or add using blend on any part of the face. Now I'm previewing the new tongue expressions. These are inevitably more complex than normal expressions since they combine tongue, mouth, as well as jaw animation. And to use them with control, it really will help to preview and explore exactly how the mouse motion produces the animation and to what extent. Previewing lets you feel how it works, how far you need to go to produce the effect you want. And whether it's the tongue or even simple expressions such as the brows, if you simply move the mouse without actually controlling the animation, then obviously the results won't be controlled either. Now, the final set of ARKIT profiles, called Mumble, contains mouth shapes which can be used to produce the impression of lip sync really easily, for example, to make it look like a background character is speaking. And used carefully at half speed recording, you can also use it to modify particular lip shapes during an existing fully lip synced animation. Now, if you want to start a new facial animation, you can do that, of course, but understanding how you can use replace mode to delete animation across the whole face and on parts will give you additional control over how you edit animations. This involves using zero passes of face puppet. By that, I mean recording face puppet, but not moving the mouse. It's just the same as using replace to delete animation in motion capture by not moving your face. You could compare it to making silent recordings in audio. So here I've just deleted the whole facial animation apart from the lip sync and eyeball rotation by doing a zero face puppet pass with a full face expression selected. And now I'm removing the eyeball motion too by doing a zero pass with an eye expression selected. Next, I'm deleting a section of lip sync here because I want to introduce some expressions without speech into that section of the clip. And this could be any part of an existing clip. And now, with just the head rotation selected in solo feature, I'm deleting head rotation, again in replace mode, by doing a zero face puppet pass. So replace mode doesn't just allow you to replace with new animation. You can also use it to remove animation, to give you a clean slate on anything from the whole face to individual features, as well as head rotation. But now, after clearing the animation, I'm now making another. And you can work in any order at all, though it may help to contextualize the motion by first applying either head or eye rotation or both, particularly if you're working with lip sync and multiple characters, and with this basic context, then moving on to facial expressions. You'll notice I've been doing passes of face puppet across the whole length of this clip, and I've been using replace mode for these so far. Next, I'm going to insert a tongue expression into the last section of clip where I deleted the section of lip sync. And I use blend mode for this because I want to keep the pass of smiling, which I put in just now. And I'm playing this back now in real time so that you can see exactly how I'm using the mouse, timing the expression in to the place I want it on the clip. So with Face Puppet, it's really important to think in terms of control, of which expressions you want to put where and what you want your character to express. Also, if you find that inserting expressions is difficult to coordinate in real time, don't forget that you can also record at half speed by using the Enter key rather than the spacebar to start recording. As well as the insertion of the tongue expression, I've now also blended in an open smile to finish off this sequence. And showing the timeline here, you can see the way in which new clips are created when you start and end recording. They create new clips. So here you can see three clips produced from the different starting points are used for the individual passes. And if you want to compile a clip into one from multiple clips, or compile a particular section of clip, you can do this easily by doing a zero face puppet pass in blend mode so that it doesn't replace anything. Next, I said earlier that face puppet is actually mocap for the mouse, so the quality of mouse motion inevitably transfers to the animation. If the mouse motion is jerky, then of course the animation will be too. So here, I'm deliberately adding some very jerky mouse motion to the head. And whilst you can make puppetry smoother by using a stylus or mouse smoothing software, you can also fix jerky motion on Face Puppet by using the new smooth or down sample functions from the clip's right-click menu. 
Both smooth and down sample can be used to reduce jitters and noise, whether on raw motion capture data or on face puppet animations. So if you have a jerky animation, it's not a problem at all, since now you can apply smoothing to clean it up instantly, directly on the clip itself. So we've covered iClone 7.9's new face puppet functionality as well as using it with the new Architect Expressions. To finish off, I just want to cover how you can use face puppet, just like motion capture, to produce short sequences of expressions which you can reuse. So I've started by deleting the current facial animation and lip sync, and now I'm making some short, separate, simple clips using different expressions. These clips could also be created by breaking longer sequences into separate clips. Now, the point is, and this will no doubt be obvious to experienced users, iClone's timeline editing is non-linear, just like audio and video editors. So you can swap clips around to change the order in which particular phrases of animation occur. You can also change clip speed to make motion faster or slower, and of course you can save and load clips at any time. And these general editing functions mean that you can use Face Puppet to create short phrases of expressions and reuse them in different ways, in different animations. So I'm finishing off this section on the latest Face Puppet update by playing an animation which, as you can see on the timeline, is comprised of different clips. These include elements of Face Puppet, mocap, as well as some face key animation, which I'll be covering in the next part. But the point is, these techniques can be used separately as well as together. That's the great thing with iClone Facial Animation. It's integrated. You can work with one approach and modify it easily with another. The tools are designed to allow you to animate whichever way you want, and to animate as easily and quickly as possible. Next, we'll take a look at iClone 7.9's updated face key approach. So I've swapped the model for a bit of variety, and I've cleared the expression clips so we can see what we're dealing with. Existing character creator and iClone users will know that iClone's face key panel provides exactly the same functionality as character creator's edit facial panel. There's a good reason for this. Character creator is for modeling and posing characters. You don't animate in character creator, but the models you create are designed to be animated here in iClone. So having the same tool set for posing the face means you can test your model's facial expressions whilst modeling. It means you know how expressions will turn out when animated. And it also means that using face key to modify and create individual facial expression keyframes during animation will be easier and faster as a result. So here I'm just running through some of the new preset expressions available from the face key expressions panel. And with the avatar updated to include the new expression set, this means that you can use both the existing default expressions as well as the new expressions in the same animation. It also means that both the default and R kit as well as new tongue expressions can be used via the modify panel. Now, face key, just the same as edit facial, is extremely easy to use. Whether it's selecting preset expressions, using individual expression sliders to set individual parts, or using the muscle panel to manipulate the face. And the new expressions update simply adds possibilities to what you can do with CC3 Plus avatars. The new expression set dropdown at the top of the muscle panel means you can switch between the default and X Plus profiles, and in practice, very much like Face Puppet, it's a matter of selecting different parts and then trying them out to get a feel of how each part is working. I've been through the new muscle panel functions already in the tutorial which covers updating avatars in Character Creator 3.4. But just to recap quickly, there's a new sensitivity slider at the bottom of the UI to make it faster to drag expressions to maximum, as well as mirror select towards the top right. You can now use double right click on selections to reset expressions, as well as right click anywhere around the head to deselect selections. And apart from these specific points, using the panel is really simple and obvious. Something users can become familiar with really quickly. Face key is another example of how iClown's approach to animation differs from that of many other developers. Complex facial rigs with hundreds of controls can be really impressive when pulling faces around in technical demonstrations, but in practice, for real-world animation production, you want the simplest, most intuitive, and fastest approaches possible. So here, I'm showing how simple it is to use the tongue from the muscle panel using the X plus tongue expression set. 
The only difference between this set and the standard X plus expression set is that the central four feature selections from the upper lip down to the jaw provide simple tongue control. Again, you can find out more in the Character Creator 3.4 Expressions Update tutorial. So here I've made a tongue poking out expression from scratch using the muscle panel, but this does take a bit of time and it can be faster, particularly with the tongue, to start with a preset expression and then simply modify from there. Now, it's perfectly possible to make animations using keyframes alone. Just making expressions in a sequence along the timeline will obviously create an animation like this. But there's a reason why I've left keyframing until the very end of these tutorials. It's because keyframing to create full facial animation, even with the simplest, most intuitive tools, takes a lot of time. And making animations with keyframing alone is extremely hard work. Focusing in on a single keyframe provides a useful perspective, since this is just a single static frame in an animation which runs at 30 or maybe 60 frames a second. And whilst it's vitally important to be able to control the character's face, to be able to make or modify any expression on an individual keyframe, in truth, a single frame is just a drop in the ocean compared to a fully formed facial animation, which you can produce so much more easily using motion capture or face puppet. In terms of facial animation, the real purpose of manual keyframing is not to build animations from scratch. It's to modify existing animations, to polish them, to make corrections or change emphasis where needed. And you can insert particular full face expressions at particular points if you want, but this is so much simpler because you have a framework and a context already created from a mocap or puppet sequence. Even the roughest puppetry will provide a better starting point than an empty timeline. It will allow you to produce better animation faster than working from scratch. To finish off, I'm showing how I use keyframing most of the time. Here I have a mocap clip, but it could just as well be puppetry or a mix of the two, and I'm making tiny adjustments to polish the animation. And having keyframing tools which allow me to edit on this level, as well as to produce realistic whole facial expressions easily and quickly, makes a huge difference to my workflow. Thanks for watching.